Hi guys, welcome to Kerbal Space Program with Nitro. Here it is, episode 5. I am finally going to rescue Bill, Bob, and Jeb from Moho, and that one other Kerbal that's trapped out there. I have finally constructed something that will do the job. And you can see it in orbit right here. It is a space station, but it's a interplanetary space station. So I called it Rescue Station, and it took a long time to construct this thing, but finally I got it done, and it has uh, nice little drop pods on it for when we get back to Kerbin. It will take a little while to load, and the frame rate will be exceptionally bad, even on my system. So, bear with it. But there it is, as it's loading in here. This here is my rescue station that I constructed specifically for this mission. It is quite massive. It's the docking station uh, model that I put up for download in my showcase descriptions. I'm probably going to do a showcase on this later. On the bottom here I have the pod that will go down to the surface of Moho and rescue Jib. Uh, every single part of this is completely unmanned, so I'll be able to fly all of these without any risk to any of the Kerbals. Up on top here are the four escape pods for the four Kerbals I have trapped out there at Moho. I was originally going to shoot them off with rockets from these here, but then I forgot the ejection modules, so... Kind of screwed up, but at least I had these other ones out here, and I made some better looking drop pods, so they're going to go back down to the surface of Kerbin ODST style. Um, yeah, so attached to this massive docking station, I have huge fuel silos with four nuke rockets each, giving us a total of 16 nuclear engines. And in the middle, I also have another double stack of these jumbo fuel silos, so I'll be able to siphon off fuel from every single one of them, which is a lot of fuel. Uh, let's see... Yeah, so I don't really want to use fuel from any of those right now, so before we go anywhere, I'm just going to disable the crossfeed from every single one of these docking ports, just in case. So I don't want to prematurely use any of the fuel that I might potentially need. We've got some communication satellites that are all around, well, not satellites, but the little antenna dishes that are all around this entire thing. It does have lights, which I'm probably going to turn on here just so I can see what I'm doing a little better. Like that. There we go. I'm also going to disable crossfeed to any of these other pods that I have attached here because, again, I don't want to accidentally use any of their fuel supply. That would be disastrous.
And there we go. Alright, so now the ship is all set, ready to go. Everything that needs to be disabled is effectively disabled. And now we can start plotting our exit vector out here to Moho, which is basically just going to be burning prograde from where we are right now. So I'm not even going to plop down a maneuver node. I am just going to straight up burn. Because it'll, it'll be fine. I'm going to reorient the craft more towards that prograde marker. And there is kind of like a little cheat, I guess you can call it, that you can do to stop a large craft like this from rotating on the spot without having to, like, fight it. So what you do is when it gets closer to its prograde marker, you actually just hit the key for time warp on your keypad. So the period key to increase time warp just by one times and then hit comma to decrease it and it'll stop the rotation on the spot. See, just like that. And that's all you gotta do. It's kind of a neat little trick, uh, probably um, not intentional for it to work that way, but it does work if you want to stop things on the spot. If it's a large craft that's really wobbly, it can rip it apart if uh, it's not entirely structurally stable, so keep that in mind. Alright, here we go. I'm burning out to Moho. I'm just going to start these engines up real slow. take a little while so I'm gonna pause it here and then resume recording after it gets uh, within the moho orbit 
All right, guys, welcome back. Here we are. I have finally achieved uh, exit velocity from the planet Kerbin. So there you can see it. There's our current trajectory. We are headed out towards the sun, but I am going to do the inclination change with Moho, and then I'm going to work on just the uh, probably the periapsis to try and bring the apolapsis down in. And I want to treat Moho this time as more of an intercept instead of just trying to go in there at full speed. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful with this craft because it's obviously not going to be able to slow down fast enough. But uh, overall, it did pretty good for fuel consumption. I did just get done refueling it. I have a little bit of fuel left in this tank here. So I did transfer all the fuel out of these four smaller ones because I don't really need those at all. And then the central one is what I'm using to fuel all of them now. I do want to keep the bottom fuel tank here with fuel in it just in case I need this later. So we should have plenty of fuel to get over there. I just want to be a little conservative with it and be careful because I do want this thing to return to Kerbin. So I'm going to bring you guys back in after I have gotten um, within Moho's orbit. Because what I'm going to try to do is just match Moho's uh, orbit and inclination around the sun. And I want to get either on the outside or inside of it, depending on how I want to intercept it. So I'll bring you guys back in once, uh, once I do that. So hang in there. All right, so here we are seven hours later, and uh, I did do... Uh, in orbit around EVE and then refueled the rescue station there and then quickly continued on to MOHO. So here we are, we're finally at MOHO. The rescue station is in orbit around MOHO and it's synced up with the Papa Dragon which has all of my Kerbals in it. So Bill, Bob, and whoever else we have in there will soon rendezvous with the rescue station. I'm gonna hop them out, get them in those escape pods. <coughs> <coughs> and uh, we should be good to go. Then I can launch my lander down to the surface and rescue Jeb and get him back up here safely. So yeah, Bill, Luger, and Bob are all going to be rescued. I had just a little bit of fuel left inside of this thing, so I transferred the fuel out of the two extra nuclear engines into what I had left in these tanks so I could propel it and then jettisoned the spare ones for uh, so I could get rid of the weight. So now this craft is a little bit more nimble and I'll be able to rendezvous more easily. I'm not going to dock with the rescue station because there's no free docking ports and the fuel that's in here isn't even enough to really be worthwhile. Only a hundred and 24 units of fuel each, so that's really not all that much, but this will work for our purposes. I don't even think I have that much monopropellant, so 84 units of that. Not going to risk it, but here we go. I'm going to do time warp here so we can speed up this rendezvous. I'm just going to have them jump out one at a time once I kill all my velocity over to the rescue station and get them in each of their own little escape pods. <clears throat> yeah, about halfway out to Moho, I realized that I probably won't have enough fuel to make it all the way back, so I made a little pit stop over at EVE and refueled it with a lot of refueling missions up there, actually, to to refuel all the tanks because I'm not able to jettison anything off of that ship. So that 
it took a while. <laughs> I was in a pretty wide orbit around Eve, and it wasn't all that bad because Eve was aligned with my outward bound trajectory that I was heading over to Moho with, so it actually worked out pretty good. I was able to stop and slow down enough to get a 500,000 meter orbit about around Eve, and that was good enough for my purposes. So the reason I like hit record here is because you probably might want to see the whole rendezvous process that I do before I get these guys out of here. Just to add a little bit of length to the video, this is one of the longer missions that I've ever done. fuel the rescue station out at Eve, I just basically sent up the same refueling craft that I was using the first time, and it seemed to work pretty good. I just had to strap a few more rockets to it so it could go the extra distance, and I got about one and a half um, of the large jumbo ones out there per mission and I refueled the entire thing to full. That definitely helped. So, in the future, what I think I'm gonna do is put a refueling station over at EVE itself in orbit, just in case I need to use it again. But I, I'll have enough uh, fuel to get all the way back to Kerbin by now, hopefully. And if I don't, I'll just make another pit stop over at E, refuel it, and then resume recording back over at Kerbin, because I do want to do the full mission this time. So, I'm going to speed it up a little bit here. I packed in half the solar panels. I don't even really need solar panels on the rescue station, because the entire thing can be powered with thermal electric generators that are placed pretty much all over it. So that's the back end of it, so I actually want to get around to the front.
All right. <clears throat> That's good enough for me. I'm just going to start transferring them over there now. Alright, one down. <laughs> Thank you. 
now for a good old Luger, and I can get this solution out of here, drop this thing down to the Moho, and then rescue Jib. I'm just gonna go and delete this Papa Dragon thing.
There. Finally, they are all safe aboard the rescue station. And now I can start rescuing Jeb. With his fate on the surface of Moho. Really hating this one frame per second, but don't have a choice with a craft this large. Okay, now that we got that taken care of, Jeb is down here in the middle of this monster crater, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this other ship, uh, do an inclination change that matches about where I would want to uh, eject the escape pod from, so I'm gonna try to stabilize this orbit so it goes perfectly horizontal. And then my rescue pod down to the surface, and that should take care of all of that. So now, I just have to go to the Space Center and get rid of that other craft so it's not next to me. Or at Moho at all, for that matter. Alright, so as far as my fuel situation goes, I did have to use all the fuel out of this first central tank here, and then I started dipping into the fuel in this bottom tank, but only by just a little bit. All of these upper orange tanks are completely depleted, and I've, certain, I've started to use some of the fuel from these smaller gray ones on all four sides, but I'm going to refuel all those before we exit Moho. And we should have enough fuel to get back to Kerbin if we don't. Again, I'll just put it in orbit around Eve again, and then go back to Moho after it's been refueled. So that's the plan. Should work. Finally get to test out this little lander that I put down the bottom. It's an unmanned lander that has a manned command pod on the top of it. It's very similar to my Cobra Mark V build, but not exactly the same. I'm 
There it is right there on the bottom. I have both of those engines shut down. And the RCS, I believe, is online. But I haven't been using RCS at all for any of the maneuvers of this craft. So RCS on every single one of these tanks is full at this moment.
this is still going to take a while to bring you guys back in when I launch the lander down to the surface to rescue Jeb. Alright, so here we go, our ship is aligned. Pretty much how I want for an orbit. Even though it's nowhere close to that, I'll do that with the landing craft that I detach from the main vehicle. So I'm going to leave the lights on before I send this guy down here. Good, that didn't use any of the fuel that I had in that tank, which is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and activate my RCS here, and SAS, and get out of here. At one frame per second. Engines are activated, we can get out of here a little faster. Start planning our maneuvers so I can go down there and rescue good old Jeb. Been down there for over a year now. I know that maneuver looks a little crazy and completely wrong, but I just need a marker on my nav ball here so I know which way I need to turn. Alright, so there it is.
once I get outside 2.3 kilometers, that model should disappear, and then I should get all my frame rate back finally. Yep, there it goes. That's much better. Alright, back in real time. So, I'm gonna go ahead and let this do a full... Well, <laughs> crap. There will be no full orbit, I guess. I'm just gonna have to keep burning that way. I want to do something like this. Yeah, whatever. It'll get there. actually see him now. He's right down there. The fuel is running low. I'm a little concerned. I might have enough. We'll see.
some fuel. to try again although I think it's already in the descent so this might not work out all that well unfortunately Moho is pretty hard to get off of once you get something on it yeah it looks like it's already descending towards the surface All right. Well, I'm going to have to go and fly another rescue pod all the way out here to Moho just so I can get Jeb off the stupid surface. So I will pause it here and then resume recording once I have that in place. All right, guys, so here we are. I actually landed the second lander on here. I brought more fuel and just stacked it onto the decoupler. Wasn't sure if this one was actually going to land because I was coming in really hot, but it finally bounced down there at about 9 meters a second, so I was pretty happy with that. And I got it within 200 meters of our spaceship, so Jeb doesn't have that far to fly because you can't really fly all that well on the surface of Moho. So, there it is right there. Moho's gravity is pretty strong, so you have to lay into the shift key the whole way in order to keep yourself off the ground.
go, he made it. <laughs> I actually forgot to extend the ladder. But that's okay. Should be able to get him up there. Yep, there we go. Alright. Shebediah is back in our pod safely. Now we can finally get off of this stupid planet and it's stupid gravity. It was so hard to get here. Alright, I'm gonna turn to the left and that should give us our trajectory that we want. carefully here because I don't want to run out of fuel again for the second time. That would really suck. So I'm just going to wait until it hits that apolapsis and then I'll burn the rest of it to gain an orbit here. Design some different landers that can launch or land on gra stronger gravity planets. Because lunar landers just will not do it. There we go. Alright, our inclination is still really bad. in the opposite direction. We are... Well, that's not good. Five meters per second. It's probably not going to happen, but oh well. I'll get it as close as we can, and then I'll have to maneuver the rescue craft over to match whatever this thing's trajectory winds up being.
All right, well, I guess what I'm going to do is just revert it, and then I'll see whatever I can get done after relaunching him off the ground and see if I can put him into uh, a position next to the space station. So I'll bring you all back in there once I get this thing taken off properly. The problem was I took off in the wrong direction to get the orbit, so I just have to pretty much take off and go in the opposite direction. <laughs> And that should solve the problem. So I'm just going to revert to the Space Center and do all that. Alright, so back again. This time I got the orbit right, got the trajectory right, tried to do an intercept, and I ran out of fuel. But at least this time I will actually make it close enough to the space station, so... Uh, it's going to be close. Again, I got, like, literally no fuel left here. All gone. So, what's gonna wind up happening is that I do have monopropellant, so I'm gonna try and use as much monopropellant as I can to slow down and stabilize myself as I get closer to the rescue station, and then I'm gonna have to orient the rescue station to actually intercept with this thing instead of the other way around which would normally be what you would do. So this will actually work uh, right here. So let me just show you by speeding it up to maximum. You can see it's getting closer with each rotation that ticks by. So once that gets over here, or relatively close to that, I'm gonna have to switch over to the rescue station and just see what I can do to intercept with this thing. And that's going to be relatively tricky because the rescue station, the uh, the pods that are on top of it have RCS fuel. It's kind of hidden underneath the parachute, so there's no way to refuel them. So I don't really want to use RCS, but I may have to. And again, that's the old ship that was on the ground, so I'm going to have to go and get rid of that. Alright, so it looks like that's going to be our, our point that we're looking for right here. So 11.5 kilometers, that's not too bad. Speed it up a little bit here. Alright, so that's all finally loaded in. Let's see. Alright, so what I'm going to have to do, it looks like, is burn inwards towards it and then slow the entire rescue station down. And there it is right there, 11.4 kilometers away. Oh, I don't really want to have to have him jump out, but I might actually wind up doing that. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. Let's see, 
Nine meters of target, but it's off in the wrong way. Of course, I'm just going to go ahead and turn on my RCS now. I really don't care if it uses it from these escape pods anymore, because I do have liquid fuel on there and a couple of little engines, so I guess it's really not that big of a deal if I use all that up. I don't have to redock them. I actually think I might crash this thing into the sea or into the Gribble Space Center. I don't know. I don't really want to reuse this uh, particular docking station because I did screw up a little bit on the top part of the docking station, so I think I'm just going to launch up a new one and reattach all these engines to a new docking station and then uh, use that if I have to. I'll have it in orbit in case I ever need to use it. and. I'll just keep it. one of those there. Then my next mission will be over to Eve. Although I don't think I'll be able to get out of Eve's atmosphere if I do manage to land. So I'm gonna have to think of some way to do that as well. I might go to Gilly first, actually. shoot for that 0 0.8 because it looks like whatever is going on here is going to be closer to what I want so if I get within 
one kilometer, I'm just going to go ahead and have Jeb jump out of that uh, extra lander and then fly on over to the station. Because I really don't need that extra lander anymore. The only purpose that thing served was to get him off the surface of Moho. So now that it's out of fuel, there's really no need for it anymore. It's just extra dead weight. I think I'm still going to be able to have enough fuel to get back. Uh, I got 287, and these should all be empty. Yep. So I'll transfer fuel while this thing rotates. I should have fuel in this bottom container.
All right, so there are fuel transfers all taken care of. Don't have to worry about that anymore. Looks like it's still eight kilometers away. So let's see. We got a little bit to go here. I'm just going to go ahead and grab Jeb and fly him on over here. So, let's see. Not exactly sure which one all of these guys are in, but I think it's one of these ones on the outer side here with the solar array that's empty. So I'm just going to aim for one of those.
Looks like I guessed right, they are all aboard, finally, after years and years in space, they have all returned home to, well, not home, but they have all finally gotten into orbit, into a ship that can take them home. So now, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that old Papa Dragon ship, and then begin my exit back towards Kerbin. If I have to stop at EVE, I'll go ahead and record once I'm in orbit around EVE, and then I might also record one refuel in bits and pieces here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to end this episode right here. Uh, I finally got done what I wanted to get done. rid of all these extra ships that I don't need anymore. So there we go, our rescue station is finally full of Kerbals and ready to return back to Kerbin, and that is going to be the next episode. So, hope you guys like this uh, rescue mission. I, I'm sorry if it jumped around a bit, but it's been 10 hours <laughs> that I've been at this, so definitely one of the longest missions ever, and I didn't want to record every single piece of it. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you like the rescue station. I do have a bunch of other cool things that I started up here. If you haven't checked out my showcase episodes, go ahead and check those out. The APC is awesome. It's currently roving around on the moon. All my ships are up for download. 
please don't download them until I do a showcase on them because more than likely I'll find something that needs to be tweaked or changed and I'll have to release a newer updated version of that and I usually do those whenever I do the showcase episodes. So that's it. They are all aboard. This thing does have enough power to get them all somewhere. <laughs> Even if it's not all the way back to Kerbin, I will be able to get to Eve for sure. Because there is still plenty of fuel left in these tanks from the last time I refueled it. So these orange ones are still completely full. And then I'm going to refuel and top off all of these gray ones before I go and launch it again. Looks like the center one still has a little bit left in it, so that's good. But yeah, next mission. Returning all of these guys back to Kerbin. I'm going to launch all of these drop pods down through the atmosphere and try to land them all at the Kerbal Space Center. And then I'm going to crash this stupid thing that's been in this mission for so long into a mountain or something. I'm not really sure yet, but I definitely am going to do an atmospheric re-entry and blow this damn thing up. So stay tuned for that. See you guys later.